Yeah, if you've watched the show, you'll know. I love 3D printing, but there's all kinds of th interesting things within the hobby that you can get into from upgrading the nozzle, getting a you know, volcano end in there, or a, a hardened nozzle, that sort of thing, or just shopping out different uh, filaments that are you know, better quality or something. But I've got a problem here, and I'm in Texas, and the humidity here is horrible. And humidity and filament don't like each other. <laughs> it gets into that filament, and then my prints start to get kind of funky looking. And what happens is the filament, uh, actually, if I get brand new fresh filament and throw it on the machine, I get a good print. And then I can grab an old spool that's been laying around for months, and it's like, I can't even get the stuff to stick to the bed. I can't get it to print. When it does print, it's, it's nasty looking because of humidity. Only one way to cure that problem is an upgrade or, or an accessory to 3D printing, and that is get you a dryer box. Yeah, let's, and Creality, a name that makes a lot of printers, they have their dryer boxes and they are nice. Let's check this out, yeah. So yeah, Creality, that makes a lot of 3D printers, also makes a dryer box. And a dryer box is a great addition to anybody's printer. I don't care whose printer you have, <laughs> you know, but it's just, it's something that it really does make a difference and it makes a big change sometimes. Especially if you've got a lot of humidity or humidity problems with your uh, filament, like I do. And let's see if we can't get this all out of the box. It's nicely wrapped, of course. It was nice. It was really heavily packed. Okay, I think we're getting we're getting to the good stuff. The very first thing that Creality did with this one, which I really liked, was not only is it like digital and programmable and all that, but you can also tell it that you're doing PLA. So it will have default settings to set itself up to dry your PLA or your pet G or your TP or whatever is you know whatever is running. You can put that roll in here, right here, and oh, let's get that out of there. <laughs> and it has two nice, really nice metal rollers in the bottom so the spool can you know, go around, but also you can feed it off the top or even back here. So you can have it in front of you here and feed it off, but it comes with a, I guess we'll call this, should we call it a feed tube or a Bowden? Uh, let's call it a feeder tube, which can go in the front here and then from here, you can feed it up to a machine, uh, a 3D you know, printing machine. So this is kind of a nice extra feature in itself that uh, helps you to guide the filament to the machine, obviously. But let's get her plugged in. And the uh, other very first thing I noticed was this doesn't come with one of those silly wall warts. It's actually plugged in. So it directly plugs into an outlet, which I kind of like because the wall wart thing is when you have a bunch of 3D printers, or even a few or one, a lot of times you're on a power bar or something or an outlet, and you don't have room for the wall warp. Yeah, which uh, just adds to aggravation or whatever. So this one here, it just plugs straight in back here, and you have a nice on and off switch right here. There's a lot of dryer boxes out there on the market, but this is Creality. This is a company that's been making 3D printers for a pretty long darn time now. So this is a brand name that is like, they know what they're doing. They do a lot of research. They're not just putting out a dryer box with a little heater in the bottom or something. This one has actually a fan air circulation system so that the whole 360 degrees of the spool gets dried, yeah, by the fan and forced air system through it. So right off the bat, you already, ha you already know because of the name, the Creality is gonna build you a good dryer box. Uh, before I forget, there will be a link in the description below where you can find this. So we're gonna plug it in and we're gonna fire it up, but I uh, also wanna explain dryers because if you're not familiar with this, this is gonna dry the humidity out of your you know, uh, filament, whatever type it is. Well, there's a nice little handle right here that we can open it up with. And let's get a roll of filament because I've got, I've got some very old, lots of old filament around. <laughs> And old filament is the worst thing to run sometimes, unless you have a dryer, and then you can correct the problem. <laughs> yeah, so here's some, uh, here's some brand name, no brand name, uh, just some plain old PLA gray. It's been laying around here forever. In fact, it's starting to get those little weird white specks and starting to even pieces of it are just dropping off because the humidity is just absolutely killing this thing. Like I said, it's, I'm in Southern Texas. So it's, it, the humidity here is horrendous, it's horrible. So you can place this inside and already I can see that it can actually, it can easily carry the one kilogram spool. It can easily fit in there. There's lots of space and I'm going to be feeding it through the top, but right now we're just going to 
dry it before we set it up. So let's turn the machine on. That would be a good start. Okay, she's on. Uh, this is going to be kind of weird. There's our power button. And you can see we got a beautiful, I don't know how good you can see that. Let me check the camera and just see how good that shows up. That looks a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, due to all the lighting in here, maybe I should shut the lights off. <laughs> that would be even better. You've got PV, which is immediately the temperature uh, that's going on here. Material PP, which it's not. So we'll go to setup material and we'll go down through the materials ASA, PET G, PC, PA. Man, there's a lot. Oh, PLA, CF. Uh, there should be just a standard PLA in here, I believe. There, there it is, PLA. So that's cool. And so we'll go to the next thing, uh, time-wise. And you're probably going to want about four hours, roughly. Oh, and I just heard it start up. And it will run this to 50 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm, in there to help dry that PLA to get it ready to be used. But right now, it's, it's in a drying cycle. And this is where uh, I've noticed a few people with uh, 3D printers. Yeah, this is where some people have failed. Uh, they think you could just, okay, I'm all, it's up, it's running, I'll just take it and throw it on the machine. Well, not really. What you want to do is get your filament in here and get it dried before you start the job. So in other words, you don't start this and then start printing, you know, no. Uh, what you want to do is get your PLA, or in this case, PLA, uh, get your school in here and start drying it. And in this case, I'm going to dry it for like four hours and then run the model. Uh, I have a small printing farm and we have some very detailed type of uh, systems that we have to make, models that we make for client. The client uh, demands a certain kind of precision to it. So it's it's like everything has to be right, you know. So it doesn't, it doesn't really, actually there's a little, uh, yeah, there's a little thing here you can actually, yep, yeah, you can actually block that off so that there's only the one hole at the back here where the uh, filament can come out. Now what I'm going to do right now is run this for four hours, let it dry the PLA out, and then we will hook it on the machine and start printing. Uh, if you have problems like me with uh, a lot of trouble with sticking to the bed, that kind of thing, or just, you know, the machine works good on some PLA but not on others, a lot of times the chances are it's not the uh, quality of the PLA. It's not because you bought a brand name PLA versus a cheap PLA or something like that. A lot of times it's the humidity has gotten in there and it is ruining your PLA. And you have a, you know, a bad spool that's got a lot of moisture build up in it. So this is a great little machine that you really, anybody has, like I said, a 3D printer, you gotta have one of these, you just have to. And Creality does make a nice machine. What I really love is this whole programmable deal. And uh, you can go four to eight hours on PLA drawing if you want to, or if you need to, you know, and it's, it's not, you know, it's not out of the bounds. Also, very efficient, uh, so it doesn't, you know, it's not using a lot of electricity to do it. You know, I think it was 18 watts or something power-wise, so it's not too bad. And it's going to run this, ooh, you can feel it, it's, it's warm. It's running, it's just baking that PLA in there right now and getting all that moisture away from it. That will make that PLA run nice and smooth through the machine and give you a, you, you should at that point get a good, as long as everything else is good on your machine at that point, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you should get a good model at that point and hopefully you can stick to the bed and all your layer lines are going to be nice and even and you're going to have, you're not going to have all the bubbling and weirdness that uh, you, I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but you can have some really bizarre stuff show up in your models when the moisture has gotten really bad. I guess the worst thing that's ever happened to me is sometimes is the PLA is so brittle and got so much moisture and it has broke inside the uh, extruder between the gears and of course all of a sudden it's not printing and I go inside and I find out that right before the gear it broke and we're no longer feeding you know feeding the filament to the model so it's like oh great you know like that's something I'll take everything apart get that out of there and in some cases I've pulled it back and it's broke off inside the uh, the PTF tube or the um, Bowden tube or feed tube depending on what you know whatever your preference is and again just to get away from all that get it nice and dry like this before you're going to use it and also I put this like right beside my machine and I'll feed this directly off of this and use it as a feeder feeding spool in most cases for my machine and that way I can heat it up run it get it ready and then run my model yeah it's it's yeah it just it helps oh yeah yeah so the other thing that this one has it has some really nice big rubber feet so it doesn't slide around which is really good because I have had them walk towards the machine 
uh, flop the spool around, get hung up, and do all kinds of weird things that have happened. This one obviously is not going to do that. It's built by Creality. They know what they're doing. <laughs> they make a dryer. They make a good dryer. <laughs> I got to thank Paul over at uh, 3D Uncle. Dot com, I think is the name of it, for sending this over to us to take a look at this thing because Paul, it's Creality. We already know it's going to be a good 3D experience, you know, no matter what it is from these people. Because between the Ender 3, the CR10, uh, the CR30, any of the machines that Creality has made in the past, and of course the K1, the K1C, and the K1 uh, Max, they have always been out there trying to get the best possible product at the best possible price for you and me to enjoy our 3D printing experience. So I have Creality, I have no problem with that with those people at all. They have uh, really put themselves out there, open source, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, they have done some pretty cool things in the past. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you while this thing's running, actually, <laughs> but I just wanted to see this, show you this back piece because look at the way this opens up and it completely exposes. Wow, that's hot, yeah. It exposes the whole roll, but there's a fan in there, and the fan is circulating like this to try to help get all of the PLA in there nice and dry for you when you're ready to rock and roll. And it's not bulky. That's another thing I really, this is the slimmest dryer box I have ever seen to it's come in the door here. Most of them have been kind of bulky, and they're, like I said, they're, they've been wall warts and just hard to deal with. There's no on and off switch. This one has an on and off power switch at the back. A lot of them don't even have that. And of course, it's all touch screen menu. Beautiful, you know. <laughs> it's a, it's really nice. And it's like I said, as soon as I heard the brand name right away, I was like, oh, Creality, you know. That's like, uh, oh, that's, that's, they're gonna be, it's gonna be good, whatever it is, it's gonna be good. So we're gonna run this over to the um, 3D printer one of them. I've got a specific one set up for a job today for running this. That's where I'm going to run some prints off and we'll just set this all up and you can just see what it looks like beside the printer or something. And really, uh, this is just a nice machine. You know, it is, it's Creality, you know, it's, and that's kind of like a nice breakdown of uh, inside what it looks like. You know, from the electronic board up here to the touch screen, they've got, you can see the rollers in the, in the, in the picture here. I've got the rubber cap on because I'm not going to use the PTF tube, but it's a nice, it's a really, again, it's a smart option that none of my other dryer boxes have ever had. None of them have ever had that feature or option. And yet that is, again, it's like, it's because it's Creality. They, they make 3D printers. They, they test all this stuff. They know what the heck they're doing. Hello, you know, so yeah, <laughs> a good product. Also that link, uh, I'm going to have a couple of links. One of them will actually be for UK. Yeah. Uh, and I tell you right now, England, they've got humidity there too. Okay. So it's not, it's not just Texas. And most of the US, a lot of it up into Canada even, there's a lot of places around the Great Lakes and stuff, humidity factors in, you know, and there's just places where it will just attack your PLA or attack your filament. Because uh, one of the worst ones, to tell you the truth, that I've had experience with over and over again, I started to absolutely hate uh, Pet G. I started thinking I will never have Pet G in here ever again. The reason is because the humidity attacks the Pet G. Now, if I put the Pet G in here and dry it first and then run it, I can almost guarantee you we will probably get a decent experience and a good model and enjoy what we're doing without all the headache. Because Pet G is it's a good filament, but I've had horrendous issues with it trying to run it on any of my machines enclosed or open machines but when I look back I needed a dryer box yeah. we're over at the 3d printer station here and I've got the little dryer from Creality set up we'll back this up just a little bit more even but uh, this is heavily tinted but you can see in there and you can actually see your spool I put a little piece of the Bowden tube in here I cut it off because I don't need all that Bowden tube or PTF tube whatever and I'm going to bring it up to my 3D printer tube right here. So, yeah, you're not going to have much experience going on with this at all. But we're just going to, you know, pass it through to the machine. And then we'll just go ahead and load the machine up with the uh, dried. <coughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. And she's happy. And load. Uh, where are we? Load. Okay. And, of course, you do not know if this is a P1P or what type of machine this is. 
because really we're talking about Corelli. We're not interested in the 3D printer, okay? So don't even look at it. Yeah, yeah, just between you and me. This is just a 3D printer of some sort, yeah. So we're feeding this and it's getting ready to, it's heating up the nozzle so it'll feed in. But once it feeds in and it can just keep drawing print uh, filament from here, and it's a done deal. Now, uh, you do have to use the Bowden tube. I tried without the Bowden tube and the rubber here uh, hangs up and just skids like a brake, almost a drag. So it's not a good thing to have. But I think she's, I think she's feeding right now, I believe, is she? Yeah, she's loading the, uh, loading the stuff. Yep, cool. And then, so, uh, and then this is great because depending on the machine, you might be able to use all this. I can't on this machine. There's another machine sitting here next to me that actually could use something like a length of tube like that. And when you do cut it, be careful because you can crush this tube. So a proper tubing cutter is not really a bad thing to have around here either. Uh, but I had to straighten the tube out after I cut it. And let's see, I guess we're ready. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, select our print. Uh, sorry about the noise right now, but we are printing and the spool is nicely going around. So it's in good shape. I'll tell you, this is some old stuff right here. And I just, look at this. I mean, you see the, see the cracking and the white and everything in there? That's what was going on before we uh, put it in the uh, dryer box because all of that is all part of that humidity thing getting into the PLA and just basically <laughs> turning into hard, brittle, just destroying it. Wow, this is the Creality Space Pie Filament Dryer, just so we have that name on here. <laughs> um, and it looks, man, does that ever look nice beside my printer? Anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. And I'm going to get out of here. It is humid in here, of course. Yeah, it's Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs>